So now, going back to our original uh, 1973 141T that we were working on before, um, we are going to begin calibrating the display by setting the intensity limit. Um, and I'm just basically just going through the manual here. Um, so you're going to start by setting the time base to uh, 0 0.5 milliseconds per division. Um, and so, and then you are going to go to the intensity limit uh, trimmer, which is uh, this one right here. And you are going to turn it down counterclockwise until the trace completely disappears. And then you are going to set it to uh, storage mode, so standard storage mode, hit erase. And we're going to set the persistence to minimum. So you're going to get this sort of very general illumination on the screen here. And you're going to turn the uh, intensity limit adjustment slowly back clockwise until the trace just begins to appear. Um, and so you want to get it so that just the the crest of the uh, okay that's totally not visible um, so you want to get it so that just the tip of the waveform and the uh, the sort of noise floor here is brightly lit but the actual up and down trace is pretty much invisible so the next thing we'd like to calibrate on our unit I am uh, back in non storage mode now um, is the astigmatism and the focus. Um, and so the easiest way I find to do that is to lower the intensity a bit and then set it to manual sweep mode. And so that basically allows you to control the position on the sweep with this uh, potentiometer right here. So you can actually get a single dot on the, the screen. And so what you want to do is you want to turn the focus completely counterclockwise so that way you get a, uh, a solid sort of spherical circle like that. Um, and then you're going to want to adjust the astigmatism on here so that the dot is pretty much as close to circular as you can get it. And then from there, we can just go back to our focus adjustment and adjust it until it is a nice fine dot and then maybe even adjust the astigmatism a little bit more just to get a nice focus point um, and you you know you can sort of seesaw back and forth on this a little bit until you get it you know just right but this is a method that I've found that more or less works um, and so then we can go back to internal uh, scan triggering and you can see it's, you know, a nice sharp trace. And so the next thing we'd like to calibrate on this display is the geometry adjustment. And generally speaking, this is a very subtle sort of thing that generally what you'll notice is that on CRT displays like this, when you have a trace that's very close to the edge of the screen like that, you'll begin to find that it curves slightly, that there's a bit of distortion around the edges of the screen, and the geometry adjust just helps to minimize those little distortions there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to narrow my resolution bandwidth here, um, increase my scan time a little bit just so there isn't any distortion from that until I have, you know, a, a nice, um, you know, a nice vertical, you know, peak right there that I can use to adjust it from. And basically what you want to do is you just want to get that adjustment as straight as possible. Um, the adjustment pot I'm going to be using is uh, in the high voltage section. It is this one right here. So that is the geometry adjustment, and that's the, the last of the adjustments that's in the high voltage section. So actually, once we're done with this, we can close it up again and not have to deal with the high voltages anymore. The 
that's basically what you want to do is you want to get a, a peak that's pretty much straight up and down that doesn't really have any curvature to it. Um, that's sort of the goal of the geometry adjust. As I said, generally this doesn't need too much adjustment. Um, and, you know, I don't think it would contribute a significant amount of error to any measurements if you were to leave this uncalibrated. So the, uh, the next things we're going to need to calibrate on this are the flood guns and the analog storage mode. That basically, when you need to do slow traces on these uh, units, the, this uh, display section basically has an analog storage mode that allows the trace to stay on the screen even though there isn't any digital sampling inside of these units. Um, so what you want to do for this is you're going to need to uh, remove this right panel right here and then uh, while I'm at it I'm also going to put the the high voltage cover back on. So I'm actually going to turn off the uh, turn off the unit while I do this. So now with the uh, the right cover off, we're actually uh, I'm going to be switching in between sort of this view here, where you can see some of the adjustments I'm going to be using, and also the the front of the screen, so that way you can see what's going on here. But what we're going to want to do to start is we're going to set the intensity to min and the persistence to minimum, and we're going to hit the fast storage mode. Um, then we're going to hit erase. Um, and so what we're going to begin by doing is turning the uh, the fast mode right depth all the way counterclockwise. So we're going to take that, just turn that all the way this way. Um, so that's the leftmost potentiometer on this set of three here that you can reach through through the uh, the side panel like this. The next uh, adjustment we need to adjust is uh, we're going to take the middle of these three, the collimation for the uh, the the flood guns, and turn it until we can see on the front of uh, on the front of the unit, I'm just going to give you a better look at that here. Um, you can see that now you can see the, the the pattern from the flood guns themselves, and sort of these two overlapping rectangles, one on top of the other. Is we're going to go to the finally the third adjustment here, and we're going to adjust it so that you get sort of a pretty even illumination pattern between the two units. Um, and honestly, that's not even going to show up on the uh, the camera, so I'm not even going to bother uh, giving you a view of that. Um, but now that it's a nice, you know, slightly more even illumination pattern than it was before, um, we're going to go back to the collimation and spread it back out so that way it covers the entire graticule and, you know, even a little bit over but just enough so that it covers the entire graticule without going too far outside the, uh, the edges of the screen. Um, and that's, you can sort of see what I'm talking about. Um, I might even spread it out a tiny bit more just so you get a bit more uh, storage area along the bottom. But I think that's, generally speaking, pretty good. Uh, that's generally what you're going for. Um, so I'm just gonna just spread it out a tiny bit more, and that should be good. And then from there, we are going to uh, set the scan mode to single, and so that way it'll stop sweeping, and so we won't have anything getting written to the screen while we're doing this. I'm going to set the persistence to maximum. I'm going to hit erase. All right, so we're back. Um, Basically, I just uh, had to readjust some of the collimation and the uh, and the uh, and the grid to just get it to cover the screen a bit more evenly. I, you know, I was looking at it from above because I was also dealing with the camera, and so I didn't really see that sort of bottom portion that wasn't really being covered by the uh, the flood gun. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, I wasn't going to bore you with, you know, me sitting there twiddling with it after I'd already explained what you need to do. Um, so, yes, exactly. So basically what you need to do is you need to make sure that the flood gun is covering 
the entirety of the Graticule and basically nothing else. Um, and so then what you want to do is set the right depth um, so that way when you hit erase, um, you know, you don't have a glow left on the screen like that. So I'm going to turn it down. There's still a little tiny bit left. And then right about there, it completely erases when you hit erase. Um, and so that's, that's pretty good. And the, the test they recommend in the, uh, in the manual is that when you write something to it, it will stay on the screen for at least 15 seconds. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to set it to an internal sweep. I'm going to give it a fairly slow sweep. And then turn the intensity up just a little bit. So it's writing. And uh, then I'm just going to turn the intensity down. And so it's not sweeping anymore. It's, that's just the sweep being stored on the screen by the, the, uh, the flood gun, sort of refreshing those phosphors that have already been excited by the beam. And so that's staying there for, uh, I mean, I haven't been counting, but easily 15 seconds. I mean, I don't see that dimming at all. So, and it's not blooming out either. That's another thing that you have to watch out for is that if you have your intensity set too high on a storage, in the storage mode like that, it'll actually start to uh, bloom outwards and start just filling the entire screen with the trace. Um, so that's another thing to watch out for. Um, but that seems properly adjusted, and now we can move on to the, the standard uh, write, write speed storage mode. And so the last thing we're going to need to adjust on this uh, unit is going to be the standard uh, write speed storage mode. So we're going to set uh, it to single sweep to keep it from sweeping. Um, then we are going to set the persistence to minimum, the intensity to minimum, and we're going to switch to standard mode. Um, and so we've got sort of, again, sort of a general illumination there. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the left of these two uh, potentiometers here. These are just sort of down and to the left of, down and to the right, I should say, of the, uh, the low voltage power supply adjustments we were dealing with earlier. And we're going to take the left of those two and turn it until it's fully counterclockwise and we can see the flood gun pattern on the screen there. And so what we want to do is we want to then go to the right of those two adjustments and adjust it until we get a nice even illumination between the two uh, flood guns. And that looks about good. And so then we're going to go back to the left of those two adjustments and then just sort of spread it out until it fills the entire graticule of the screen. Um, and then we are going to, to test that, we're going to set the persistence to minimum, go ahead and erase, uh, set it to internal sweep, and then slowly turn up the intensity until it begins writing to the screen. Um, and so then, same as before, we're just going to turn down the intensity completely and just verify that it stays lit for 15 seconds. So if you just hit the store mode, so now it's no longer sweeping, it's literally just displaying what was stored to the screen, and you can see the trace will stay there for quite some time.